Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, and we are in for a treat today. We actually have Mr. Greg Dickerson for a fourth interview. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you. Thank you for this. This is a great treat for my channel, and this is really a, probably all of them have been great today, but this is an important topic. You called the great deleverage about six weeks ago. We followed up a couple of times. I think we both think it is coming and frankly has to come, uh, but I'm curious, where might the audience kind of see opportunities percolate because you know we hear great deleverage we think opportunities but i don't know that everybody's ready to look for them where, where do you see opportunities kind of popping off uh in the near term or midterm you know it'll it'll be across the board so you know that's just going to be a pricing reset so the mm -hmm. market you know pricing is going to get reset we're 30 40 percent frothy right now so when that you know unwinds and we get the deleveraging in the market you're going to have some buying opportunities the key is you got to watch the right sectors Mm -hmm. because certain sectors are still way overvalued and some have, you know, taken a bigger hit than others. So you have to really be careful about what you're going to invest in in stocks versus growth versus, you know, future and, you know, technicals and all those types of things. You know, I'm not a big stock market guy, but, you know, you just need to make sure and understand, you know, that like a lot of sectors of the stock market have been carried by four or five companies. You know, yeah. that's where the bulk of the growth has come from. So a lot of them are unwinding. Other ones are unwinding less, you know, so, so you just need to be careful there, but there's going to be value you know, in the markets. Once it recedes, interest rates go up, that's going to affect and impact the real estate market. So there'll be more opportunities. We'll see in inventory levels climb. Yeah. I know there's a lot of demand right now, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's very, you know, um, unbalanced yeah. because there's so you know little inventory out there. As soon as interest rates rates change, you know that's going to change. Yeah, um, you it's, know, there'll it, be less demand for people buying. We're, we're already seeing people pull out, so that's going to create opportunities in real estate. Yeah. You're going to say something? Yeah, I was going to tell you about real estate. I had one of my real estate agents on yesterday for the market that I look at. So this is a this is Fresno. It's a million people, right? I'm not saying this is the nation, but this was Fresno. I asked him what was active listings. Uh, December of 2019. So this was before, right, before the pandemic. Active listings, Fresno County, so about a million people. Um, I think it was 2457. All right. So cool, right? You don't have any numbers. You don't know if that's good or bad. Guess how many listings yesterday, December 26, active listings. Just take one guess. 2557. 487. From 2400 down to 400. We are 80% off. And again, nobody has context. I've looked at my market every day, so I know the market, generally speaking, is about 18 to 2,200. That's about what I've seen for 20 years. So to, to know that we have 400, let's call it 500. Let's round up 500 active listings today. There's, there's no supply. I mean, it's just, it's like supply could double and we'd still be under available. That's real estate market's crazy. Yeah, it's really interesting. So you have a lot of things going on right now. You have the holidays. So a lot of yeah. people pull their houses off the market or don't list for the holidays. Uh, less and less people are having to move now, you know, because mm -hmm. of COVID and, and, stuff, and remote yeah. work and things like that. So, you know, we're still in unique times, but yeah, you know, I've seen in our area, the same kind of thing. I mean, you know, in, in our general area, it's a much smaller MSA. Usually there'd be six to 700 single family homes on the mm -hmm. market at any given time. And, um, you know, we've seen that drop over the last couple of years, but this year, you know, right now there's probably a hundred. So, yeah, you know, just... one fifth of what it normally is right now in terms of inventory levels. Yeah, exactly. But one fifth. Again, yeah. very unique. And we're starting to see reports and, you know, all kinds of different areas that, you know, buyers are stepping back, especially new construction. Mm -hmm. Builders are starting to see, you know, less demand uh, yep. in some areas, mm -hmm. not all, uh, just because prices are so high and delivery times are so, you know, sketched out that they, they can't promise anything for any period of time at any price. Yeah. So that's starting to, you know, see pushback. But again, that will create opportunities down the road when it changes because it will change. It always has, it always does. Mm -hmm. You know, we we will reach, you know, uh, a point where we're oversupplied in real estate again. It always happens. We get undersupplied, then you build, 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 and then you get mm -hmm. oversupplied. Yeah. Problem is we can't build right now because, you know, COVID. We yeah. don't have enough people, you know, people, working. supplies. They're they're actually counting dead days. I didn't even know what a dead day was. But hey, we don't have windows. We can't put mm -hmm. them in. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a dead day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it's very tricky right now, and and you know, all across the board with all kinds of different things, you know. And then the third area where there's going to be a lot of opportunity in a deleveraging environment is you know business. You know, as mm -hmm. as other areas consolidate, it creates opportunity in new areas, and you know, in terms of you know taking over businesses, buying new businesses, starting a new business, you know, things like that.
Yeah, I think there's a lot to talk about here. Again, is it fair to say that, um, well, at least this is what I believe in, and if I'm wrong, please tell me. I think the stock market, you will see the deleverage first. Real estate just moves slower, right? It'll happen. It just moves at a slower rate. Is is that a fair thing to say or am I? Yeah, yeah. Way? Again, the real estate market, yeah, stock market's instant. I mean, as soon, you know, you'll see that start to happen instantly. It already has. You know, it's it's obviously the most liquid market in the world mm-hmm. um, and the most liquid type of assets. Real estate is, you know, less liquid. But if you see two things happen, interest rates go up and mm-hmm. if you see um, liquidity, which is they're buying mortgage-backed securities, yes. and that stops, that's less liquidity going out, meaning less you know, uh, money for lenders to lend. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, when there's less money available to borrow to buy real estate and it becomes more expensive, that instantly changes the market overnight. We saw it happen in 2008 and nine. It changed overnight. Yeah, no. Yeah, again, the thing in the real estate market that I watch and I talk to lenders and agents all the time is for me, it is, um, first it is active listings. Because again, if a normal market's 2,400 and we're at 500, you're not going to get a crash with that ratio. It, it will be month. It'll take months just to get back to somewhere close, right? So I'm watching active listings. I think it. I think it does trend up next year. I think every month has more because uh, this thing's going to get behind us. It's going to become endemic, and people are going to start living their lives again. Uh, but that's slow. It's it's quarters in the making. I think the stock market, like you said, uh, you know, rates go up. It changes the value calculation, and suddenly risk assets are off, and value is on, and all of those things. But I loved your last point. I did not think about this is why you're an entrepreneur and I'm not buying businesses. There's a lot of businesses that a maybe the owner is, you know, getting up and they've gotten through the last two years and they're just tired. Uh, maybe there's some businesses that took on too much debt. I mean, there's, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of going to be a lot of opportunities the next year or so to pick up existing businesses uh, as opposed to starting new ones. Is, is that a fair assumption? Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's both because there's a lot of vacant space still, you know, in, in different sectors. And then there's a lot of businesses for sale, you know, just people, you know, cycling through, struggling, don't understand marketing, whatever, can't remain competitive. You can do consolidation plays where you buy and roll up similar type businesses. And the funding for that is is cheap and available right now, you know, to take over businesses, buy businesses. You can combine an SBA loan with, you know, creative financing. You can use just creative financing. You can use vendor financing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways that you can, you know, buy or take over a business. I have a course on that as well on how to, you know, start or buy an existing business and how to do it, you know, creatively. So you don't have to use any money. Um, You know, so there's a lot of different ways to do that. But like SBA loans are extremely uh, inexpensive right now to get, and you know, for, for whether you're buying one or starting one from scratch. And, yeah, I mean, it's a great time right now, but as soon as that liquidity drives up and interest rates change, you know, it becomes more and more difficult. So yeah, uh, it, it's that's where s- the creative financing comes in. As things get more expensive, inventory yes. levels rise, everybody wants out, you know, that's when you get creative and you can you can make some really good deals. Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, again, I think a recession or at least a slowing of a business cycle is on the horizon and that's where the best deals are made, right? You have a motivated seller, you have really few buyers, so you can, you have time and you can work out a deal that works for both of you. I, I totally agree. Uh, Greg, where can people find your amazing courses? Yeah, yeah. GregDickerson.com. Everything's there. YouTube channel, podcast, my courses. Um, they're all there. They're cheap. They're good. People people love them. You know, it's 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 really cool. Yeah, they're under a hundred bucks is what I've heard. Yeah, I did that for a reason. That basically covers the cost of the technology and, yeah. you know, stuff to keep them maintained and, and, you know, keep them out there and promote them. But, you know, they're they're based on everything I know and everything I've learned over my 30 years as an entrepreneur, real estate investor and developer. And, you know, multiple businesses, and then I'm coaching people all around the world. Yeah. And a lot of that content and information is based on what they're doing and all kinds of different businesses and real estate investments all around the world. So it's, uh, they're, uh, it's really cool. Yeah. Do yourself a favor, folks, check them out, maybe add that to your uh, New Year's resolution list uh, or, or plan, New Year's plan uh, to move forward. So Greg, thank you very much.